Jeffrey Kraft. Officer Kraft, good morning. Good morning. Where are you employed, sir? City Columbia Police Department. How long have you worked there? Eight years. Can you tell the jury a little bit about what your duties are with the department? No, I'm a master police officer and a canine handler assigned to the Special Operations Division currently. Um, pretty much you know, respond to all canine service, calls for service, um, high risk calls, major events that take place in the city and assist patrol with anything they need on the street. Now, officer, just from a logistical standpoint, you talk a little bit fast, so make sure you talk oh, so that they can understand what you're saying, okay? Yes, sir. You said canine? Canine handler. What is that? What does that involve? Um, I have a canine assigned to me and respond to my dogs trained in uh, tracking, apprehension, um, narcotic detection, and I assist the street whenever they need a canine assistance. Okay. Um, so back on March 29th of 2019, were you on patrol that evening? I was. What area were you charged with patrol? I was patrolling the Rosewood area at five points. All right. And is that the ordinary area in which you patrol? That was the area I was patrolling that night. Okay. You said Rosewood? <coughs> yes, Rosewood, Rosewood Drive and then the five points area. Okay. I'm going to show you. Graphic here. If you could describe generally what this area is that we're looking at. Uh, Harden Street going into Five Points. Okay. That's the Five Points corridor. This is Harden Street here, the long road. Is yes, that sir. Right. Yes, sir. And then this area up in here is what? That's five Points. Five Points. Okay. You pretty familiar with that area? Yes, sir. All right. Well, how's that? Um, been patrolling that area for the past couple of years. Prior to being assigned a canine handler, um, five points was my patrol area. Okay. Why were you tasked with patrolling in this general area um, on this particular occasion? That's where the cell phone was last pinged in that area, and that's where Samantha Joseph was uh, last seen. What information did you have about Samantha <coughs> Josephson and her situation on that evening? That she got into a late models black Chevy Impala in front of Bird Dog, which is in five points. And that was the last time she was seen or heard of through any uh, source of communication. And in fact, is that the bird dog there denoted by the red pin on the map? That is. Okay. You said that the information was that she had gotten into a black Impala? Yes, sir. In front of the bird dog? Yes, sir. And that had been approximately when in relation to this evening? About 24 hours prior? Correct. Yep. Okay. You got that information by way of the BOLO that we've heard about that went out? Yes, sir. A BOLO is, what does that stand for? Be on a lookout. Okay, so what exactly were you looking for that I was, night? I was looking for a late models black Chevy Impala in that general area and or Samantha Josephson. So at that particular occasion, to your knowledge, this is, so help me walk through it. This was, when you started your shift, was that Friday evening? Yes, sir. Okay, and once you hit midnight, it crosses over into Saturday morning. Correct. And this traffic, um, the, the time that we're about to talk about where you got involved is about 2 a.m. that morning, correct? Saturday morning. 0, 2.30 at the rate Okay. And that would have been about 24 hours after she, Ms. Josephson got into the Impala, correct? Correct. Okay. It's a little confusing with the midnight. No, I agree. So, okay. so it was Friday night, but it was really Saturday morning. Early. Yes, sir. Okay. Correct. All right. Thank you. Um, were you the only one tasked with looking for her or the vehicle? The whole city was. This email went to uh, every police officer in the city, and of course, on duty officers in between calls. That was their primary test to try to see if they could find her. And uh, the first email had the bolo attached, correct? Correct. Did you receive a second email from the department? I did with the picture of the beagle and a picture of Samantha Joseph. Okay. And how long were you on patrol that night? When did you start? On uh, six o'clock at night. Six o'clock at night, so that's six o'clock Friday night. Correct. All right. And throughout your time patrolling that evening, did you encounter, uh, let's say up until midnight, one o'clock, how many Impalas did you encounter? None that matched the description. Okay. And of course, did you see anyone who fit the description of Ms. Justice? I did not. Right. So let's take you to um, later that evening, or early morning hours, and talk about at what point did you actually encounter a black Chevy Impala? 
On Harmon Street, approaching Blossom Street, going into Five Points. All right. Where this white pin is, is that approximately where you got behind the Impala? Yes, sir. And that you said on Harden Street and headed in which direction? Northbound into Five Points. Into Five Points. Okay. What intersection is this? Harden Street and Blossom Street. Okay. And what was your relation to the Impala at that point? Um, when I got behind him, he got into the turn left uh, lane to turn onto Blossom Street. Okay. And at this point where you're behind the Impala at Blossom and Harden, um, approximately how far is it from there to the bird dog? Like two blocks. Okay. Do you agree with me that it's about 800 feet? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's close by. Thank you. Um, describe um, what happened once the Impala began to turn left onto Blossom Street. I activated my blue lights, being a vehicle match description of the bullet that I received. Um, blue lights were initiated. He made a left on the Blossom Street, continued to travel down Blossom, Blossom Street, and then made a left hand turn onto Saluda Avenue, uh, which is a one way road, and he turned onto the wrong. He turned onto the street the wrong way. Okay. So and does this he, red line kind of denote the path that you all traveled? Yes, sir. And he came to a complete stop on Saluda Avenue. Now, when you say that Saluda Avenue, that he turned on the wrong way, can you describe Saluda Avenue, how it's set up in terms of the flow of traffic and, and Saluda, medians? Yes. Saluda Avenue is uh, divided by a large grassy median with trees and bushes and stuff like that. It's very obvious you know, which way to travel you should travel. And he made the turn onto Saluda Avenue on the wrong way. Uh, he turned on the Saluda Avenue on oncoming traffic. Essentially down one way street, is that Correct, right? the wrong way. So when we see this map here, you can kind of even see the, the median there, is that right? Correct. And so this side traffic should have been going this way. Correct. Correct? But he traveled that way? Yes, sir. Okay. And um, the pin there is approximately where the stop occurred? Yes. All right. At this point, do you have any knowledge about who's driving the vehicle? I do not. Okay. And ultimately, did you... Um, were you able to make contact with the driver? Yes, sir. Okay. And approach the vehicle on the driver's side. Hold on one second. All right. Yeah, the defense lights are in either direction. Previously noted. Yes, sir. You may proceed. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Shield in my patrol vehicle and it gets activated or by me activating it or it gets activated when I initiate the blue lights. Okay, so in this instance, did you turn it on or did it come on? It comes on automatically with the blue lights activation. Okay, and does it does it have a kind of a backup feature where it catches the time before you turn it on? It has a one minute preset. So what does that mean? It records one minute prior to me activating the blue lights or activating the dash cam. So in other words, when the moment you hit the blue light, it's not recording necessarily, but once you do that, it does pull the recording from the previous minute. It does. And so at this point in time when the video begins, you haven't blue-lighted them yet, correct? Correct. Or blue-lighted the vehicle. Objection, Your Honor, leading. Have you blue-lighted the vehicle yet? No. Okay. But the video turned on due to what you just described, is that right? Correct. All right, thank you. 
All right, this time I'm going to publish the dash cam. This intersection is which one? That is Harden Street and Blossom Street. Is that the involved? That is. Can you describe this turn as we watch it? He's driving to Saluda Avenue as he makes the turn. You can see the one way sign. He's going out to uh, Church and Truck. And there's the median that divides the two lanes of traffic. And the cars on the side of the road? Correct. Correct. The park cars are facing the proper direction. Stop it right here for a moment, and I'm going to ask you some questions. Um, who is that? That's myself. Okay. And as you approach the vehicle, um, on for any vehicle really for that matter, but specifically this one, what is your concern? What is your um, goal? What are you trying to do as you approach the vehicle? There? Um, primary for me is officer safety. Approach the vehicle in a safe, tactical manner. Um, make sure I'm observing what's inside the vehicle, who's inside the vehicle. And looking for any type of thing that can harm me in the beginning. Okay. And um, did you make contact with the driver? I did. Okay. And initially, just generally, initially, was the driver cooperative? At first, he was very cooperative. Um, he was slouched back in the back of the seat. His hood was um, over his head. Okay. But he was communicating with me and answering the questions. Okay. And at some point, um, did you actually ask him to step out of the vehicle? I did. Okay. And um, once he got out of the vehicle, was he cooperative with you then? At first, and then uh, I asked, um, I started, he asked why he got stopped, and I explained to him, I was about to explain to him why he got stopped, that he, you know, the car matches the description, and I didn't even get to finish my sentence, and he took off running. He put his hand in his pockets and took off running. What did you do when he took off running? Initiated a foot chase, told him to stop multiple times, and then I lost him on, he ran towards Waccamaw Avenue, and that's where I lost him. You were, you were unable to keep up with him? Correct. One moment. Right. So as 
uh, you described uh, a moment ago your initial encounter of the drive of the vehicle. I want to take you to the next slide on the PowerPoint. Uh, just looking at the initial frame, what is this a video of? This is my body camera. This is me sitting inside of a patrol car during the traffic stop. And that is part of uh, State 29, correct? Correct. All right. Can you tell the jury what a body camera is? It's a body camera we wear on duty, and any call for service or anytime we make contact with a, anyone in the public, we activate our body cameras. And why do you do that? Um, for, you know, of course, for evidence or make encounters of people. Um, and you indicated that um, when you approached the vehicle that the driver was seated in a particular manner. Can you expound on that? Yeah, his seat was reclined really, really back, um, so it's hard to see unless I get right in front of the window. Um, and then he had his hood over his head. What else did you observe on, on his head? Uh, he had like a bandana uh, wrapped around his forehead. So before we get to it, I'm just going to ask you a couple more questions and then, and then we'll play it. You said initially he was cooperative, right? Correct. Um, you asked him some questions? Correct. Um, what types of questions did you ask him? Well, approaching the car, smelled a strong odor of marijuana come from within the vehicle. Um, so me, I was like, hey, you know, who's been smoking the marijuana inside the car? He freely said he was earlier. And then I asked him, do you have any identification on you? And he said he doesn't have any identification on him. At that point, that's when I asked him, can you step outside the car? And he complied? Correct. Um, and you indicated that you said something to him um, about why you pulled him over, and that's when he took off. Is that right? Yes. Okay. okay. What's going on, sir? You got your license? With you got your license on you? I'm Officer Craig. Columbia Police Department K9. No, no, no license on you. Why not? Is that the hoodie you were describing? It, it is. And then the, the bandana underneath? Yes. Okay. All right, man. Who's smoking the marijuana? I had smoked some earlier, sir, when I was at home. All right, man, you're going to have to step on out, man. All right, here's the deal, man. I pulled your car over because it matches the suspect. Get your hand in your pocket. What are you, crazy? Get over here. Hey, get over here. Go, we're running. Hey, I'm going to release the dog. I can't. I was just going to see if he'll stop. Bravo, Mike, wearing a gray sweatpants, gray sweatshirt. Walk them up. Doors blocks at 500 block. Nunez, keep going. He's going to be on your left. Sir, back around. And the uh, body cam goes on. Uh, correct? one block down on Wacom Avenue. Okay, so did you go down to see if he, if the suspect had been detained or did you get back to your vehicle? I went back to the vehicle because you know, there was a passenger inside that vehicle. Okay. And again, just going back to the map here, the white pin is approximately what, where the traffic stop was, is that right? Yes. Okay. And then what is the red pen generally? Uh, I believe that's Congre Avenue. That's where he was uh, apprehended. That's where he was apprehended? Um, okay. But you didn't go down there, correct? No. Okay. You went back to the car? Correct. Um, when you went back to the car, uh, without getting too far into particular to this point, 
what did you do? I made contact with the passenger and uh, try to get an identification, see what's going on, see if I can identify who just ran from me. Okay. And um, at this point, um, again, you still didn't know who the driver was, correct? Correct. And you didn't know anything else about Ms. Josephson, correct? Correct. All right. So generally in a situation like this where there's a traffic stop, um, and specifically you, you said you smelled odor of marijuana, is that right? That is correct. Um, so what would you then do in regards to that? Uh, search a vehicle for any source of or marijuana inside the car. Okay. And did you in fact do that in this case? I did. Okay. And what did you find, if anything? I uh, found a little bit, a bunch of marijuana shape, just little pieces of marijuana on the driver's side floorboard. Okay. What else did you find during the search of the vehicle? Uh, a cell phone and a set of keys. Well, can you describe the cell phone? Um, an iPhone. Uh, it was white and, or feminine color and a set of keys with a pink keychain on it, or key ring on it. Feminine color as in the, uh, like the rose gold? Type. Yes, that's correct, yeah. Right. And when you found those items, uh, did you put them in pockets? What do you do with them? I put them on top of the car. On top of the impala? Yeah, yes, correct. Okay. Did you then continue to look throughout the car a little bit additionally from there? Yes, still looking for marijuana being, it was a strong odor. I didn't think the little bit of shake was going to be the source of the odor. Okay. Um, did you look around a little bit in the back seat? I did. And was the trunk opened? I, at some, at it, some yes, at some point the trunk was opened. Yes. Did you actually go digging through the trunk and removing items or anything? No, opened that? it, saw what we saw, and backed up. Okay. Um, in the light of the totality of the situation, um, why didn't you search the car more thoroughly at that point? Um, there is lots of evidence inside the car. There's obviously something severe took place inside the car um, that needed to be processed by professionals, our crime scene techs. So that's when we backed out. They wanted, we wanted to preserve as much evidence as possible. When you say it, when you said it was obvious, I mean, what, if anything, did you observe? Uh, large quantities of blood, uh, footprints on the window, uh, cleaning supplies, bleach. And again, why would you have not done that yourself as opposed to crime scene? Because I am not a crime scene technician. Uh, we have people in our departments and other departments that are specialized that process uh, those type of evidences. Chevy Impala. And this is on stage number nine also? This is the body cam on stage number nine, is that right? Yes. This would have been when in relation to the foot chase? Um, after the fact that he returned to the vehicle. female standing there at the front, um, where did she come from? She was in the front passenger seat. Was she there during the traffic stop? She was. <coughs> and what was her name? Venetia Wilson. Can you describe what you're doing currently? Uh, right there, just um, seeing if I can identify the driver and the person who just ran from me, um, and then at the same time looking for the marijuana inside the vehicle. You testified you found some shake? Correct. And can you say again what that is? Shake is pretty much the ground up bits of uh, marijuana um, that they use to put in cigarettes or uh, to smoke it. And where did you locate that? In the floor, the driver's floorboard. Pretty much where your feet would be. Is the 
to use your reference? Those are. And we haven't gotten to it yet, but where was the cell phone, that the rose gold cell phone you spoke about, where was that located? In between the driver's seat and the center console, in that little gap. the gap you're referring to? That is. What is that? That is the rose gold cell phone. So. You didn't examine the phone or do any forensics on it or anything like that? Though? I did not. for uh, investigating the contents of that phone? Would that have been you or somebody else? Somebody else, not me. <laughs> not your area of expertise? Not even close. And this is, uh, what are we looking at here? The trunk is open, and that's when we discover more potential evidence in regards to uh, the missing person, so that's trying to back up. See more blood? There's more blood in the, uh, right there in the rear passenger seat. There's a backpack. described a moment ago, that's the viewing of the trunk contents, correct? Correct. And that's the point where you guys decided what? Uh, make phone calls to our crime scene techs and I believe Slugger's the one that responded for the crime scene process. Without saying what anyone else told you, searching the vehicle when we discovered the blood 
That's when I found out she has been found deceased. Thank you, sir. Thank you. By the defense. If we could work. Sir. <clears throat> morning, Officer Kraft. How good are morning. you doing? Pretty good. Well, thank you. Officer Kraft, uh, you initiated the traffic stop on Nathaniel Rowland, correct? Correct. Okay. And Nathaniel Rowland, as we saw in the video, came to uh, a stop at the light and used his blinker, correct? Correct. Okay. And prior to you turning on your blue lights or signaling him to stop, uh, he had not committed a traffic infraction that you were aware of, correct? At the time, correct. Okay. So you saw the car put on the signal light, correct? Correct. You saw the car get into the turning lane, correct? Correct. Then that car turned left, correct? Correct. Okay. So if you're driving down to Harden, you have to continue straight to get to Bird Dock, correct? Correct. Okay. But this car turned left onto Blossom Street, correct? He did. And if you were to continue down Blossom Street, you would eventually get to Assembly Street, correct? Correct. And when you pulled Mr. Roland over, you questioned him about the marijuana he smelled, correct? Correct. Did you also question him about a cup of alcohol in his car? No. Did you see a cup of alcohol in his car? No. Nathaniel stated to you when you asked about the marijuana that he had smoked prior to you pulling him over, correct? Correct. Did he tell you where he had smoked? No. After officer, are you, are you familiar with officer Nasia? I am. Am I pronouncing his name correctly? You are. After officer Nasia gained control over Nathaniel, you went back to check over his car as seen in the video, correct? Correct. And in this case, uh, when you're reviewing it, you saw Nathaniel Rowland had shake, uh, loose marijuana that you testified uh, typically is used in rolling cigarettes or blunts, something of that nature. Correct. And you also found an edible in this car, correct? At the time, I believe so, yes, sir. All right, an edible is simply just uh, edible marijuana. A treat, yeah, a treat infused with edible marijuana. Okay. And at some point during your search, you also find an empty box that used to contain sandwich baggies, correct? Correct. Okay, and would you agree that in your experience as a law enforcement officer, when you find drugs uh, and baggies together, that that's typical um, in dealing with narcotics? Most of the time, correct. Okay. One of those charges was actually simple possession of marijuana, correct? Correct. Take the course indulgence. Anything further? Uh, very briefly, Judge. Um, when you were uh, speaking with um, Mr. Rowland, um, you didn't ask him any questions about where the drugs came from or anything like that, right? No. You asked him about usage, correct? Correct. But not the origin? Correct. And when you asked him these questions at the outset, as we observed, um, he was compliant? He was. Did he appear to you to be coherent? 
Yes. Did he appear to you to understand the questions that were being asked of him? He did. And did he respond in a coherent manner to you? He did. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next witness. State calls Officer Nasia. Columbia Police Department. I need you to speak up. Currently assigned to South Region Delta Squad Patrol as well as the Columbia SWAT team. And what do you do at Columbia Police Department? Um, currently, while I'm on patrol, I take calls for service, uh, assist in the community and any, with any assistance that they need, and then as well as being on the SWAT team, which means that I serve high profile warrants, assist with narcotics and violent offender arrests, as well as active scenes. And what is the SWAT team? The SWAT team is Special Weapons and Tactics. So I'm going to move you back to March of 2019. Was that your duties back then? Uh, back then, I was currently on the SWAT team. We weren't assigned anything with that. I was currently working patrol that night. And what do you do as part of working patrol? What does that entail? Uh, taking calls for service, stopping vehicles, making traffic stops, keeping the uh, public safe. And where were you patrolling? On, back on March 30th of 2019. That night I was assigned to the Old Shannon neighborhood which borders Five Points as well as Five Points itself. And is that in Richland County? It is. And so can you tell the jury what happened that involved you in this case back then? Sure. That night um, we were, while in between calls, looking for the suspect vehicle that black and color Chevy Impala and multiple officers were making traffic stops that night on black and colored Chevy Impalas attempting to locate the vehicle in question. And I'm going to stop you. You said many officers were looking. What were you, were you looking as well? I was. Um, did you see any? I did, um, but at that point, by the time I saw them, other officers had already initiated traffic stops on vehicles, and I would just show up as a backup unit to make sure that everyone was safe. And then once we got the information we needed, we would clear up and we would go back to patrol. And so any of the vehicles that you had contact with, were any of those bloody? I never actually made contact with that vehicle. Okay, so you never made contact with any black and polish yourself? No. So proceed on, I interrupted you. you people were looking for black and polish. Correct, I was just clearing up from backing up another officer on a traffic stop when uh, Officer Kraft called out with the black and polish that he was stopping on Saluda Avenue. At that point, I was on Gervais Street and I started making my way there to back him up, which he was on Saluda. So I turned down Greg and was traveling down Greg Street. Um, while in route, he I'm gonna stop you, because they talk a bit kind of fast. Sorry. All right, so you said that a call went out. What does that, what does that mean when a call goes out? Um, Officer Kraft had put out that he was making a vehicle stop, put out the vehicle information and the location that he was initiating the stop at. And is that abnormal or normal while you're on patrol? That's normal procedure. So you hear the call go out, so you are responding. Is that what you, I interrupted you? Um, I was going to back him up, correct. Okay, did you receive any other calls while you were going to back him up? I did not. Okay, and what, where were you going? Where um, were you headed to? I was heading initially to Saluda Ave where Officer Kraft had pulled over that vehicle. Okay, and did anything stop you from going to that address? No. 
Okay, so what happens as you're going towards Salute Avenue? As I'm going towards Salute Avenue, uh, to back up Officer Kraft, he called out with foot pursuit and started. I'm going to stop you. What's a foot pursuit? It's when a suspect um, flees from police on foot and we give chase okay. on foot. So a call goes out that there needs to be a foot pursuit. So what do you do? That's when I uh, activated my blue lights and sirens and started making my way towards them. Um, and at that point, while I was heading there, I was listening to the radio traffic and taking the directions that he was giving out, heading down Saluda Ave and turning onto Wakama to try and gauge where the suspect was fleeing so we can create a perimeter to apprehend the suspect. And how familiar you are, are you with this area? Because you're saying different roads. Do you travel this area every day? Correct, often? every day. Is, how often do you go on Wakama, for example, in a, in a day? Probably at least once or twice. So very familiar. Correct. All right, so as you're proceeding, what happens? As I'm proceeding, um, Officer Kraft, as well as the other officer that was chasing, were giving out um, locations as to where they were running, where the suspect was fleeing. And based off that information, I gauged where to try and intercept the foot pursuit as to cut off the suspect from running, which is when I headed down Blossom Street and turned onto Congaree Avenue. Uh, when I turned onto Congaree Avenue, that's when Mr. Rowland turned from um, Wakama onto Congaree, and I was able to make visual contact with him, which is when I exited my patrol vehicle and was able to safely detain him. And you said you saw Mr. Rowland. Is he in a car or walking? He was actually running. And could you describe what he had on at the time? He had on a light gray uh, sweatshirt as well as a light gray pair of pants, and his hood was up. And I'm going to show you slide. Where this red pin is, is that where we're talking about if this is, if Wakamai Avenue is here, Blossom Street is here, and Santee Avenue is in the middle? Correct, and the red pin is the uh, 500 block of Congaree Avenue. And is that, is that where you make contact with Mr. Rowland? Correct. And you stated, and I believe the jury's already heard, did you have a body cam on? I did. And when is your body cam activated? Um, upon exiting my vehicle. This is my DVD copy of my body cam footage. And were you able to watch that earlier? I was. And is that a fair and accurate depiction of your body cam from March 30th of 2019? It is. Been altered in any way? No, ma'am. Your Honor, at this time I'd ask to introduce State's Exhibit Number 5 into evidence. It's in evidence. Thank you, Your Honor. Can you see this okay? Yes, ma'am. Is this your body cam, what we're watching? It is. And I know it's moving all around. Is that you? <laughs> that is. Okay. Who is that that you're handcuffing? Uh, Nathaniel Rowland. Why are you handcuffing? Um, based off the knowledge I had, he was just a suspect that took off, uh, that ran on foot and failed to stop for uh, police command. And is that the normal <clears throat> procedure to handcuff someone who's ran? Correct. That is an arrestable offense. <clears throat> And what are you doing at this point? At that point, I'm uh, frisking him for any weapons. Did you find any? No. And who's patrolling? 
patrol car is that that we see? My patrol vehicle. And who is, who are these officers? Uh, the one with the flashlight on the left is Officer Boyd, and the one on the right is Officer Bice. Okay. And who is this black male? Nathaniel Rowland. At that point, we're uh, evaluating him, making sure that he is okay, um, trying to gain information from him as to why he ran and the nature of the incident in and of itself. And why, why are you checking to see if he's okay? Because safety is our main concern and priority. And was he okay? He was. Did he give you any indication that he wasn't? Uh, he did say that he was sick. He stated that he had the flu and that he was having difficulty breathing. At that point, we notified uh, EMS to come and evaluate him. And did they come? They did. Did they have to take him to the hospital? They did not. What did they do? Released him back into our custody. He requested to sit down. He said that he was having difficulty breathing. And did you let him sit down? I did. And I positioned him in the uh, upright position to open up his diaphragm so that he can get more air. Is that a normal procedure? It is. And we see, who is this with the light behind him? Officer Nunez. What is he doing? Currently Mirandizing him. Is that a normal procedure? It is. And I'm going to pause it here. After he does that, was, did Mr. Rowland respond? Uh, he would not answer any questions. May we approach? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Uh, not verbally. Thank you. After, what did you all do with him? At, did you leave him at the car all night or what happens at that point? Um, after he was evaluated by EMS and released into our custody, um, I notified my supervisor who told me just to wait while they were getting ready to process the scene. At that point, we were notified that we can bring him over to the scene where he stood by in the vehicle. And what, what if anything else did you do? Uh, after the apprehension, I uh, stood by with him until he was transported to investigations. And who transported him to investigations? Myself. Did you, what if any items did you recover off of the defendant? I believe I recovered a cell phone and his cap that he had on his head. Admit it without objection. So 
this is the cell phone that you recovered on March 9th, March 30th of 2019? Correct. And where did you recover this from? Uh, that was in his pocket. Before you show it anything, do you rec recognize these items? I do. What are they? Uh, they are bandanas that he had on his head. And have they been changed in any way? No, ma'am. This time we'd ask to introduce state exhibit number 11 into evidence. No objection, ma'am. So, start with this item. Is this one of the bandanas that was recovered? Yes, ma'am. With the $50 signs and $100 bill signs? Correct. And can you tell the jury? These were the other, this was the other item? Correct. And what is this? Um, is it called a do-rag or a headband, Dana? Yes, it's one of the terms. And those were both recovered from the defendant that day? Correct. Those exhibits, were they marked by the court reporter? I'm sorry, Your Honor? Were the exhibits marked by the court reporter? Not yet. I got to wrap them up and put them in the bag for her when we do that at a break, Your Honor. Is that satisfactory, or do you want to mark them at this t as they are presented? I'd like to mark them as they are presented. I can handle them to her, Cross examination. Yes, sir. I may please report. Yes, sir. Officer, to see you. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm well. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Officer, uh, as you testified, you're the one who actually gained control of Nathaniel during the early morning hours of March 29th. That's correct. That was around 2 15, 2 30? Uh, around 2 36. 2 36, okay. And uh, you, you mentioned uh, that. You saw the officers, uh, and so you decided to create a perimeter. And so, uh, more or less, uh, I believe you say it might have been a lucky turn that led you to, to cut him off? That's correct. OK. And in the process of gaining control over him, uh, you, you secur secured him on the ground. And with the assistance of another officer, uh, you were able to pin him down to secure the handcuffs, correct? That's correct. OK. And at some point, uh, you state that Nathaniel ran from the police. Uh, and Nathaniel's response was that he didn't know what y'all, the police, were going to do to me. Do you recall him saying that? I do. Now, at some point, Nathaniel 
you mentioned earlier that as far as him being read his rights about his cooperation, correct? Correct. Okay, and he was he was non-responsive. He was non-responsive. Just um, used his head a couple times to nod. Okay. And at some point, uh, EMS arrives, correct? That's correct. Okay, and is that because Nathaniel was complaining about saying some sort of injury or having the flu? He stated that he had the flu and that it was difficult to breathe. Okay. And was he breathing heavily at that moment? He was. He had okay. just finished uh, running. Sure. And was Nathaniel cooperative with EMS? Uh, he would not answer any of their questions. But he was able, his vitals were taken, correct? I do believe they were. Okay. And did Nathaniel present as a coherent individual during that time? He did. Thank you, the course indulgence. So Nathaniel Rowland took off on a foot chase, correct? That's correct. And he was pursued by several officers, correct? Correct. And about how many blocks from his car to where he was ultimately apprehended did he run? Do you uh, recall? About three to four blocks. Three or four. Was he sweating at the time? He was. He pulled? Okay. All right, that'll be all. Thank you, officer. Thank you. Uh, can you redirect? No, sir. All right, thank you, sir. Your next witness. Your Honor, may I please the court. State calls Officer James Nunez. My name is James Nunez. Good morning, Officer Nunez. Good morning, how are you? Doing well, how are you? Not too bad, thank you. Officer <coughs> Nunez, where are you employed? Columbia Police Department. And how long have you worked there? Approximately four years. <coughs> In what capacity are you employed with the Columbia Police Department? A patrol Department? officer with the patrol unit. And which region are you assigned? Uh, southeast region. At the time, it was the south region. Are you still assigned to the south region? I am, yes. I'm on Alpha Squad, A Squad. Please describe some of your duties as a road officer. Just, <clears throat> but, uh, as other officers stated, um, calls for service, traffic stops, assisting citizens with their safety needs and just serving them whatever the needs they see fit. I want to turn your attention to the early morning hours of March 30th of 2019. Were you on patrol at that time? I was. And what if anything happened that evening while you were on patrol? I would respond to the <clears throat> respond to the scene to assist the, the citizens with whatever needs they have for us to assist them with. Was there anything that occurred that night that required your assistance? Other than, not to my knowledge, for any other calls or service, um, but Officer Kraft's traffic stop, yes. I want to talk a little bit about Officer Kraft's traffic stop. Okay. What, if any, involvement did you have in that? I was in the approximately, <clears throat> my apologies, about a half a mile away when he initiated the traffic stop and then I started to head that way to assist. And then when I heard the foot chase was about to, was commencing, I 
turn my lights and sirens and head that way to assist Officer Kraft and other officers on scene. And when you say you heard that there was a foot chase, what do you mean by that? My apologies, on the our dispatch through our radio, our in-car radio, I heard Officer Kraft call the foot chase and I went that way to help commence, to help assist in the, the call. And what area of Columbia was this? This was um, on Saluda Avenue, close to Five Points, approximately a quarter mile to half a mile from Five Points. Did you initiate your blue lights? I believe so, yes. And once you arrived at the scene, what happened? When I arrived, <clears throat> when I arrived on the scene, I saw I was going on Saluda, and then I observed Officer Kraft on running on Waccamaw. And that's when I turned around to Waccamaw. I observed Officer Kraft. I observed Officer Kraft signaling me to continue on for the suspect, Mr. Roland. Thank you, my apologies. Take your time. I observed Officer Kraft um, flag me down, or not flag me down, but signal me to go forward and that's where um, Officer Nisia and Officer Boyd detained Mr. Rowland, and I assisted with that as well. When you say you were assisting, were you in your vehicle or were you on foot? Yes, when I was driving my vehicle, and then I went, I took a wrong turn on accident. I circled around to where Officer Nisia and <clears throat> Mr. Rowland were, and then I got out of my vehicle exit my vehicle, turn my body camera, and then went to assist in whatever need they need me to. And was your body cam on and fun functioning that evening? That's correct. As, that I exited, as I exited the vehicle, it was operating and on. Beg the court's indulgence, Your Honor. I'm approaching the witness with what's been marked previously for identification purposes as State's Exhibit 8. <clears throat> do you recognize that disc? Yes, I do. With my signature is on it. And have you had a chance to review the contents of that disc? I have. And what is on that disc? My body cam footage from the incident that night or in the early morning. And do the contents of that disc fairly and accurately represent the body cam footage um, from your body camera um, of the early morning hours of March 30th of 2019? It does. Your Honor, at this time, the state would request that we enter into evidence what's been previously marked as State's Exhibit 8. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, permission to publish to the jury? Yeah. Uh, who is this <coughs> officer right here? Officer Nisia. And what is this? Right here. It is my notepad I have on duty for important details and call information on the top is a metal card with a Miranda warning we read to individuals who are being detained in major situations calls. And is that uh, identification marker in the top left corner, um, is that your badge number? It is 24979, that is mine. against the court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him or her present with you while you're being questioned. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one...
376374. Correction, 376, 385, and 393. You're good, you're good. All right. All right. You've already talked to a lawyer and have him or present with you while you're being questioned. If you can afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to you represent you before any questioning. If you wish, you can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. Do you understand each of these rights I explained to you? It's a yes, no answer. Do you understand each of these rights I've explained to you? Yes or no? We need an answer from you, man. Okay. There was a brief pause in there um, after you initiated Miranda. Uh, can you explain that? At the time, I was listening to my, my uh, lapel mic. I believe I had an earpiece in, and I was clarifying which units were on scene to our dispatch via the radio, and the numbers I gave out were our, our individual units that we were identified by the radio on. And when you were Mirandizing the defendant, did he respond to you at all? No verbal responses, no man. And during the course of that Miranda, was there anything preventing him from responding or speaking? As you can see in the video, Officer Nisia is supporting him so he can sit straight and breathe properly. Back of course, Is this still your body cam? It is, yes. Is that still your badge number at the top of It is, yes ma'am. And who is this again? This option is just standing up. Yes, he's in right there now. Okay. Did you dispatch EMS? I'm not sure if I did, but yes, dispatch was, dis EMS was dispatched, yes. And why is that? To make sure Mr. Rowland was in good health and no major health concerns were presented at the time. What? What? You tired? Alright, so what's going on here? It appears that he is tired from running away from the police and <laughs> trying to catch his breath. And then right there I did a sternum rub to get alert his attention. What is a sternum rub? A sternum rub is when you, you use, it is technique, um, police, medical professionals use, you use your um, knuckles right here dig, to dig into your stern, sternum to alert the individual, make sure he is conscious and breathing. Is that, is that common practice? It is, yes. At this point, is there anything restricting his ability to breathe or move? No, ma'am. And y'all are actually trying to help him? We are. Breathe better? So what's happening here? We're attempting to set him up so he can have a better position for breathing so his airway is not constricted. We do sit him on the curb. Try to readjust him so he can have the, the best position to be comfortable as much as possible and breathe properly.
explain what's going on here? I'm approaching the EMS ambulance and the EMS technicians to explain to them the situation. And by explaining the situation, what did you tell them? Just the situation at hand um, that he was involved in a foot pursuit with us. We just need them to check on his vitals, make sure he's in good health and <laughs> medical condition. And if you recall, what was the indication that you got which made you think that you might need EMS attention? Um, as he stated previously, he said he had, he had the flu and he was breathing heavily and sweating quite a lot. So we just want to make sure that he was in good health before anything else occurred. Is this something that would be done out of an abundance of caution? Yes, and also to make sure, and it is also standard procedure um, to make sure individuals we are encountered with are in good health if, if an investigation is to, 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 is to take place. And who is this individual right here? He is um, one of the EMS workers. And what's happening here? He's just chatting with or having a conversation with Mr. Rowland, trying to get some information from him. Was Mr. Rowland responsive at this point? I do not believe so, no. Was he cooperating with this EMS individual? At this time, I, I do not believe he's talking to them. Please describe what's happening here. It appears that they're, they're assisting him up to walk him towards the ambulance to get further medical attention. And by him, you mean? Uh, Mr. Rowland. Is he? Right in the middle between the EMS worker and Officer Nisia. Wearing the gray sweatpants? That's correct, and the gray hoodie. Is he being cooperative at this point? Uh, it does not appear so. He's walking slowly. We, are, <clears throat> we need to assist him with, by his arms to get him to the ambulance. What do we see here? He is seated at the edge of the ambulance in the upright position so they can further examine him and give him medical treatment if he desires. Do you recall if he was responsive and cooperative at this point? I do not believe he is responsive. Officer Nunez, when I say not responsive here, what does that mean? It means he's not responding to any questions pertinent to the medical treatment or the questions that the EMS is asking so they can treat him properly. As you can tell, he is breathing and moving. He is the, the EMS, I believe he's the sergeant of the EMS ambulance at the time. As you can see, by his, he has three stripes on his, his sleeve. And what's happening here? Um, further e uh, medical evaluation of Mr. Rowland, trying to see if he needs EMS attention. And at this point, to the best of your re recollection, was Mr. Rowland cooperative in giving information to this, this EMS professional? No, ma'am.
Officer Nunez, what's happening here? I believe at the very beginning of this video, you observed the sergeant removing the blood pressure cuff from <clears throat> Mr. Roland's arm, I believe, to, to measure his heart rate and such to make sure he does not have any medical issues or things they need to know about at the time. And did EMS have an adequate opportunity to check on Mr. Roland's vitals and all that? Yes, as you see right behind it, you see the, the monitor and you did see him removing the, the blood pressure cuff, but he did not give him any information about himself. Was there any indication that there was something wrong or that Mr. Roland needed additional medical attention? No, he, he was breathing in. And he was breathing and no issues were presented at the time. And after that, what happened? After that, um, once they got clearance from the ambulance, we went to, we got further um, word from our, our supervisor and more investigations. At that time, myself and I believe myself and Officer Nisia took him to our patrol car to have him sit there until further, further instructions. And when you say when he was cleared, what do you mean by that? Um, what I mean by that is medical clearance by the EMS crew. Uh, he did not need or requested medical attention at the time. And you got a, a call from, or an instruction from a supervisor that instructed you to take him into custody? Yes, I believe myself or Option Nisio were instructed just to place him in the back of our patrol vehicle until further. And was he placed into custody at that point? He was still, um, I can't speak on that, but at the moment he was placed into the vehicle until further. Did you make any further attempts to speak with him after that? I do not recall. I do not believe so. I have a question about that, Your Honor. Nothing further from the state, Your Honor. By the defense. Thank you, Your Honor. Please, the court. Good officer, how are you doing? Doing well, how are you, sir? Doing well, thank you. <clears throat> officer, you were not involved in actually pulling over Mr. Mr. Rowland. That is correct. And you were not involved in actually apprehending Mr. Rowland. That is correct. When he was close to you or when you had an opportunity to be near him, did you smell an odor of marijuana? I do not recall at the time. Beg the court's indulgence. Anything further? You may step down.